The least interesting thing about us is what we actually do to make money. But what makes us interesting, what makes us inspirational, what makes all of us show up every day wanting to be a better version of ourselves and add value to this world is the culture. And if you go back to surrounding yourself with people who give a damn, and have extremely high standards and love you enough to hold you accountable and say, man, if, it, if my name's gonna be alongside yours, then you're gonna make me look better than I am and I'm gonna make you look better than you are. And we're gonna demand really high things from each other day in and day out. And that's what really makes this place special. I mean, that's why I wanna sit here today and, and talk to y'all. The standard of excellence that we set is not for everyone, and that's what makes us the team that we are. You know, we strive to be perfect. Uh, it's much aligned with my enjoyment or intrigue in Six Sigma is this notion of continuous improvement and always wanting to be better and better and better. That's Nathan in a nutshell, and he's ingrained that into this team. The status quo is the worst thing you could ever be. If you're average, you're failing. And once we get to the level that he pushed the team to, we want to go above and beyond that. Primarily, people are defined in how they respond to some of those tough moments. Like when you get knocked down, do you get back up? That's how we've sort of developed our current core team at 60 Adventures, right? Who has the pain tolerance? Who can deal with the stress? We like to have a good time too, but uh, you better be here to work your ass off and keep going when it's not easy. You know, if you continually push that, it's gonna wear people out. And some people, it's not sustainable. But Nathan, for the longest time before I was even here, I know for a fact, and you can ask anyone that was a part of the team then, he'd be up at two in the morning and he'd stop working at 10 o'clock at night. And he did that and he built this. I mean, Nathan built this company by taking risks during the times when people were scared of what's happening with the recession. And so that says a lot about him. Um, and a lot of people, when they, when they do that, it makes you uncomfortable. What lights me up is making people uncomfortable. And when somebody around me is on pins and needles because they don't know what I'm gonna say next, how I'm gonna put them on the spot, or what I'm gonna go try to encourage them to go do, like that's what's really, really fun. And if you don't have butterflies in your stomach, then I mean, you're not alive. That's really what the mission boils down to, inspiring other people to bet on themselves. I mean, that's what I want this place to be all about. I've been very fortunate at a relatively young age to where I'm in a position to be able to go give people that platform to go take their shot. But that's how I want to spend the rest of my career. It's not necessarily being employee one of anything ever again, but taking that other person and helping them just like other people have helped me along the way with resources, relationships, you know, and wisdom earned. So that's that's what I'm trying to just pass on here, not only because that's what fires me up and lights me up inside, but that's really where I feel like I can have such an impact because there's not many people in a leadership role or a company that's preaching that mentality out there like, hey, it's okay to look like an absolute fool. Just take the chance. If you brick the shot, it's okay. There's gonna be another game tomorrow. What's Your 68 comes from uh, Yamir Yager, who I describe as kind of the Michael Jordan of the hockey world. He wore the number 68 because his grandfather was killed in the 1968 Russian invasion of Czechoslovakia. And he wore the number 68 to remind him that every time he took the ice, he was playing for something bigger than himself. He was playing for his family, he was playing for his country, not for fame, not for fortune, not for a medal. And so when he was tired, when he was beat up, you know, he reminded himself of why he wore that number. And for me personally, my 68 comes from all those who've sacrificed for me to be where I'm at and all those counting on me going forward to carry out the plans God has for me. I mean, that's inside of this organization, that's out in the community, and it's damn sure you know, at my family. But for anybody to be here and to flourish, they've got to know what that is for them. And we challenge every single person to identify and truly understand what their driving force is. And the business side of it's very little. It's the impact that you can have on other people along the way, whatever that is.
I would love for 68 Ventures to be a place where people finish business school and they want to get an interview with 68 Ventures because uh, it is a, a very sharp group of people, a very high performing group of people, hardworking people, but also really care about the people that they work with. And sort of that's the culture that, that we are creating. My biggest advice would be to put yourselves in positions where you're uncomfortable. You've got to take on opportunities that, you know, you're not the most experienced person in the room. You don't want to join a team where you're the best player. I promise you that it's never going to get you anywhere. Keep taking risks. Surround yourselves with people that are better than you. And don't be afraid to say, I don't know something. And you need to learn that. I view a lot of my job and my responsibility as the founder and chairman is to never let somebody hit a ceiling. If Drew, if Adam, if Will, if anyone gets comfortable at the level they're at, then I've got to figure out how to dial it up and challenge them, whether that's growing the business that they're responsible for or finding the next opportunity. And one of my kind of rules for people, if they want to move up and have a bigger role you know, inside of here is work yourself out of a job. Either train the person underneath you to replace you or make yourself obsolete. And to a lot of people, that's a very unnerving prospect to be like, well, if I'm not valuable, then why do I need to be here? But to me, it's always, if you've placed yourself in a position to where you're ready for what's next, and that means either somebody's gotta be stepping in and taking that role on, or you've gotten so good at how you're doing things, it's not even needed anymore. And if you're able to have that level of success, we'll always find the what's next for you. And we're not for everyone. I mean, that, that's something that you've got to kind of come to grips with if you're going to be aligned with me is that I'm not for everyone and I'm completely okay with that. And if you're going to be in my corner, you're not going to be for everyone and you need to be okay with that. But if you're part of this tribe, you're going to have the most loyal people that are totally dedicated to your success that are in the foxhole with you every step of the way and you can't replace that with a thousand acquaintances or lukewarm relationships.